So those are fava leaves on your left. Oh yeah? Yes. So they plant fava to reintegrate nitrogen back into the soil. So they plant the fava beans, they sell the fava leaves, till the soil with the stems, or they let it go straight to fava. <laughs> Look at the line. Getting lost sometimes is the best thing. This trip, I've been lost in Florence multiple times and every time I've gotten lost, we've discovered something amazing. So the leather is from here? Tuscany leather. Tuscany leather, yeah. Beautiful. Italian cow, Francais cow, tan in Tuscany, made in Florence. I am Tuscany. It's as Tuscan as Tuscan. 15th generation, I don't know. Wow, that's amazing. No, no, it's normal. No, no, Mexico is normal. And I think that is part of that learning curve. Being open enough to say, you know, it's okay to get lost. Vintage Italian Playboys over there, cool light fixtures, glassware. Plate where this place is cool. This is wallpaper. This is vintage wallpaper. Nineteen seventy. I was a child when my mom bought the really? I remember it. So this I is remember. it's not from my mom, but I remember it in my house. This is like the equivalent of the Time Life series in the US. See? I think these are cool. I might need these. Being here has a respect level of food. You know, here at Fratelli di Mare, it's so small, right? It's so, but he's so precise and so detailed with what he's making. It's not about hurry up, slam it, get it out. There's care, there's love, he's, it's pride. So, pulpo arrabbiata. So there's onion, cipoli, with a little bit of fennel flour in there, right? Look at that. So arrabbiata is spicy, you know? So gorgeous. All right. Let's Here we see. go. Let's hopefully I don't wear it, wow. okay? I love it. Oh my God. It's a great picture. You're gonna to get to your destination. Things are gonna happen the way they're gonna happen. Just enjoy the ride. The thing about being here in Tuscany for Strada is really, really, it's just, it's overwhelming. There's so much emotion right now. It's like, I'm beyond excited and nervous. Let's be honest. There's people coming from all over to ride this Fondo. Do you have the I do, I do have that. I just don't have the CO2. You can't put it on the plane. <laughs> and race this race the day before. And I'm in a place where my family came from. Nazi. Hopefully I don't need it. Thank you. And I'm gonna ride in a race that I I've watched, I've read about. It it's pretty exciting. I'm the great-grandson of an Italian immigrant, Rosalie Cosentino. All the foods and things she did when I was a little boy, really, a lot of it was the inspiration for why I cook today. One, please. See. All right. As a little kid, my great-grandmother Rosalie used to make this thing called tomato pie. Same but different. 
dough, tomato, oregano, super simple, good olive oil. It's interesting to see this here because I always thought tomato pie was an Italian American thing. Little did I know. You know, everything has a time and place. Everything has a time and place. Everything came from somewhere. Place of origin is powerful. History and food is powerful. History and cycling is powerful. Mm, I just like the simplest. I think I'll have espresso. Their Mamma Mia mixes are really good. Is it? Mm -hmm. Give me some real true understanding of the Florentine food history because it's really deep and rich. From what I've learned is based off of the Medici family. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's based off of the Medici family, but also a lot from the recipes of the humble people, of the people who didn't have very much money and so they had to reuse a lot of food. Ribollita, papa al pomodoro and panzanella. And these three dishes all have one thing in common, which is the reuse of day-old bread. The food, cucina povera. Si. The, the food of the poor. So basics were beans, right? Mm -hmm. Bread. Kale. Cavallo very simple. Si. So it's Tomatoes. Like, but they could be put up or dried and then rehydrated in water. It's, it's so interesting because it was the true embodiment of sustainability, respect for the land, respect for no waste, mm -hmm. right? Like Lampredotto, Norvetti, all these cuts of meat that are traditionally looked at as cucina povera, right? Is beautiful because you make the best out of when you have the least. And it stays, this respect, you know, even when there is more abundance, there is still respect for not wasting food, for not wasting any part of the cow, and using everything as well as possible, even in times of wealth. I think the, the funniest part is, you say cow stomach to somebody in the US and they're just so off put. But when you taste it here, the perception culturally, it's so eyes wide open and using everything, Grazie. Food transcends all boundaries. It, it's, there's taste memories, whether it's an item or a moment that's brought back by a dish or a flavor or a smell. The joy that you get from cooking a meal for somebody is a very powerful feeling. It's, <laughs> it's the one thing that can give instant gratification. It's that moment when you feed somebody and you can see the reaction from a guest over a dish. And it's the same thing on a bike. It's just that moment of freedom where it's, you know, like you literally, there's wind just blowing on your face as you're descending down a hill and you're, you're careening and swooping and flowing and, or whether you're just climbing and you're out of the saddle and it all has those moments whether it's a bike or whether it's a meal or whether it's cooking. I mean, I'm all over the place all the time. Being on a bike is very powerful way for me to control a overstimulated mind. When I get on the bike, it controls my ADD because my ADD goes to focus solely on keeping me upright, making sure nobody's gonna hit me and looking at my surroundings at every moment. So I'm so focused on those things that it allows me to think clearly. And that's a lot of times when I may smell wild fennel or bay leaf or rosemary on the sides of the road. It allows me to finish dishes in my head or come up with ideas or think clearly about things that I wanna do. They're, they're very powerful tools, the bike and food. So, one gold medal? One gold medal, Athens 2004. And how many world championships? Uh, two. two. 2006 uh, Salzburg and uh, 2007 Stuttgart. 
But have uh, other three for me, eh? Big victory. Yes. Uh, three World Cup. 2002, 2003, 2004. Well, now little tour. Today only 50 kilometers. Okay. Uh, two little climb. Okay. And a uh, little. Uh, I live in Tuscan. I live uh, one hour from Siena. Okay. Uh, this is my region. Uh, Italian is. Uh, Italy is so uh, beautiful. Yes. But, uh, for me, this area is fantastic. Today, I ride with you. And then I go to Panzano and I prepare la carne entera with Dario. Very good. And then we have dinner. So, have you eaten at Dario Cecchini's restaurant? Uh, Dario is. In Italia, uh, un artista. An artist. I think uh, he eats uh, uh, vegetarian. No? Me? <laughs> no! <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Vegetarian. Tonight we're going to have a vegetarian <laughs> meal at Dario's restaurant. So, and uh, you are ready for a ride? Yes, I'm ready. Go. Let's do it. Go. Yeah, you had some uh, chignale. Carne. Carne. Isteca Fiorentina. Perfect. <laughs> How about this one? <laughs> They're old. I found them yesterday at a vintage shop in Florence. They're pretty cool, right? Yeah. I think these are pre everybody else. I'm late. Dario! Ciao! So sorry. How are you? <laughs> so good to see you. Peace. See? This, this is my church. Oh my god. This is beautiful. Is it okay? Da 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 da. Relax. Calma. Sì, è dry ma è, è riposata. This is the next. <laughs> wow. Diciamo insieme, però Allora forse un due. Right there. I give you mine. Grazie. Okay. Hello there. Okay. Found seam. Long time. That's Please. why she Please. was yeah. so funny. So clean. First podcast. So, start here? Yes. Okay. If Take. actually they did come come Yeah, It's a meeting of butchers here. This is very nerve wracking. I'm just going to stay at camp. L'importante è che i coltelli diventano le tue dita. E devi sentire i tuoi coltelli come, come le punte delle tue dita. Li devi sentire. Quando io ho incominciato a lavorare, io avevo eh, paura del coltello perché ero tutto tagliato sempre. E non trovavo mai il coltello perfetto. Non avevo il controllo del coltello. Poi alla fine ho trovato la bilancia perché ho affrontato il lavoro con calma. Cosa che non puoi fare...
E quando affronti il lavoro con calma, diventa come una danza, ci vuole un'armonia, devi sentire quello che tu fai. Questo, questo deve essere sempre in bilancia. It's super sweet. I'm enamored by what he does. I'm enamored by him, what he's created by staying true to who he is. I mean, he stayed true to Panzano. He stayed true to his belief of transparency and meat, transparency in what he does. What you see is what you get. He's honest, it's true, and it's magic. And, you know, it's, it's that goal in life to be able to believe in what you believe and have it come true and make it happen. And Dario did that. Yeah, it's a big heart. He's saying you've got a big heart. Do I? I that means I should go faster, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Rattle, rattle. Here comes the cattle. But it's gravel fine. Yeah. Okay. I think the thing about you know, bicycle racing, running a, a kitchen, dinner service versus the actual race day. You know, there's a lot that are very similar and very intertwined. It's always about improvement. It's always about getting better. It's always about learning better technique. It's always about finding better ingredients or, you know, staying true to those ingredients. And it's almost identical in cycling. It's like people are working towards gaining watts or, you know, getting that extra mile out of their legs that they didn't think they could get before by building up and training over and over and riding. And it, it's the same. That to me is what's really beautiful about cycling. It's like you're all in. Culinarily, you're all in. He's a fan. Oh. <laughs> but this oh. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah. Like, you come off of that and you're like, okay, I got a breath, and you come over here and you're just like, that's gnarly. Well, it's a little windy now. I'm gonna pack. Wow. I'm gonna put in my pocket to be smart. I'm gonna put a vest in there. If I need to put a vest on under a jacket or over, I'm gonna pack when I be smart. Oh my God. The fact that it's Podacar and Valverde. Valverde's the old man. It's so rad. <laughs> oh my god. History's made today. History is made.
I can't believe he did it. It's so good. Julian Alphalib. This is insane. You've got the youngest kid and you've got the oldest guy. So how fast are you going to be is not easy because today I have drink more. <laughs> good for me. <laughs> it's good for me that you drink more time. Tomorrow is a fantastic day. No stress. No stress. No competition. No. Only ride and smile. Wait with a friend. You know, this there's this goal everybody has in life and everybody wants to be the best at what they are and it's like I think everybody forgets, you know, if you don't enjoy the ride, you don't get another one. So make the most of it. You don't get to do this twice. There's no like, hey, when you get to the end, there's no do-overs. You're done. When you get to the end, you're in the ground. So make the most of the moments. Enjoy them. Live them. It doesn't always have to be win win or be the best and sacrifice everything else there is a life balance are you ready for a party yeah. This one's ugly. I think the cross of the puerco is starting to get me. I've got to get the super domestique some coffee. Drag me. These taste like my grandmother's. You should try one. They're so good. I mean, the fact that they're able to marry so much history in with everyday life, it doesn't change. This is never gonna go away and people still move forward. They're able to marry the old and the new. They're able to make it work so beautifully together. The love of history, the love of the classic meal of the food. I mean, there's still people coming in. There'll be people coming in for hours. Today was a good day. Today was a good day.